Wow, what a game, what a win, and what a way to close out a seven-game homestand. A yes. perfect 7-0. Get those brooms out. The first time they've swept a seven-game homestand since 77-78. As we welcome you mm. here to Sixers Post Game Live, brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance, Amy Fiddle, Jim Lino, and Mark Jackson. And we are following along, just like the rest of you, wondering, oh, my gosh, are we good in overtime again? Or are they going to pull this one out? But, guys, I mean, when you're looking at this, the energy they came out with in the second half, completely different game than it was in the first gym. What was the difference maker? Well, uh, the Sixers, I mean, I want to say they picked it up tremendously at the defensive end. But I'm going to tell you, Aim, they had to do it to win this game because I thought the Clippers were mm. sensational in the first half. And the Sixers coming from 20 behind were that much better in the second half. For me, the best win of the season. Yeah, it actually started a little bit before halftime. They went on that mini little 13-5 run to cut it from 20 to 12. But to Jim's point, Mark, you're looking at the Clippers. They shooting 10 of 19, 24 to 4 when you're looking at bench points. It looked like they were going to run away with it. But the Sixers, I don't know what was in that halftime speech, but it must have been something good. Once again, Amy, a demonstration of having a deeper bench when things are not going well and having other guys to step up. This 76ers nucleus of, of not just James Harden and Joel Embiid, but this is a great team win. A lot of people had their hands in this. George Yang hit some big threes. Shake stepped up. Come on now. Let's give him credit with yep. his two. Big win by the Sixers. I mean, and we talked about the defensive effort on the seven-game homestand. We saw it in the Raptors game where they held them scoreless with the last nine minutes. They got a couple of free throws. You look at that tonight. 0 for 6 for the Clippers in their last, what, three minutes or so of this game, Jim. Yeah, they made some free throws, but that's a difference maker. Defense is leading to not only the wins, but it's leading to offense. I think that's important. Yeah, I think the Clippers had made 10 threes aim in the first half. And I could mm. see the second half, the Sixers made a concentrated effort to chase them off the three-point line. And the result, they only made four in the second half. I thought that was the difference defensively. Well, we talked about the bench. They stepped up big time. Yeah, they only had four in the first half, but they had 24 in the second. Thanks in large part to George Niang. He had 11 of those bench points. Here he is with Taryn Hatcher. Thank you, George. You guys are down by as many as 20 in this game, and you battle your way back. What was the biggest key to turning this one around for you? I think the biggest thing for us was stepping it up defensively. You know, we need to pick up our intensity, make those guys feel uncomfortable. And once we started to get more transition points and got the crowd into it, I felt like, you know, it was tough for us to turn back uh, from there. Obviously, Joel over 40 points in this game. James Harden, 21 assists in this game. The big names putting up big numbers, but it seemed like everyone got involved in that second half. How much do you guys kind of get each other going? Once guy, one guy goes off, it seems like everyone starts clicking. Yeah, you know, the way James was spraying the ball, uh, you know, around out there, and Joel obviously carrying the score and load, and Tobias doing what he does on the defensive end. Um, you know, it, it was a collective group effort to get this one, but I think we're all in a great place. I said it before the season of giving where we're all about making the extra pass right now, and that's going to continue into the new year. Perfect season for giving. Finally, George, seven games at home leading up to this holiday, and you guys take all seven of them. What do you think that means, especially in front of this crowd? Yeah, no, that was huge for us. You know, obviously, we were kind of in a sticky situation, you know, coming into this home stand. So to take care of the home, home court uh, advantage, and, uh, you know, we're excited to play on Christmas. I know that, so we're looking forward to it. George, congrats. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thank you so much. Sixers get the big win, and they really came up big down the stretch. we got to take a look at how they closed this one out. I mentioned that, that really the Clippers went cold thanks to the Sixers' defense, but the Sixers' offense came on fire. These are some really big buckets. We've got three of them in a row. Mark, I'll start with you. And these are key moments in the game, obviously late. Key moments. Once again, Tobias hit that shot to put him up. Mm -hmm. This team had found a rhythm. They started off the game kind of slow and sluggish, and then they found a way to pick it up when they counted. Look at this. Mm -hmm. And, Jim, when you see your teammates, obviously you're feeding off that defensive energy, but offensively, that was his 21st assist right there. No, it's coming up. But when you're thinking about what it is they did offensively, it was important that you can feed off the other people. Yeah, well, Joel was uh, so good uh, at the offensive end of the court, and you had Harden distributing all over the floor. Uh, I think it was just a matter of time Amy, before they kind of caught their groove and started making some shots. Uh, and then when you combine that with the tremendous defense that they played, I mean, uh, it was a really very, very impressive win. I mean, so this is, you're thinking, okay, it's a four-point game. You've got two of the best, and Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, certainly, who can close it out and win. Paul George made all three of his 
free throws. But then the claw, he makes right. the first, then he missed the second. Also fun because James Harden gets the rebound. And that was his 10th rebound to give him his 70th career triple And I'm going to make a call here. Did Joe do, knew don't touch he out? needed a rebound and deferred to James. The CMB was he right did. beside him. His arms did he not gave, go up. Exactly. He gave <laughs> Avon the opportunity to snare that rebound. And then just as fitting, Joel Embiid puts it away, ices it at the free throw line, and they pass the ball around. It's funny. We were watching them, Mark. They pass it to Tobias first, and they didn't foul him. Tobias actually is perfect in the month of December from the free throw line. So we're not going to foul him. Did you think they knew that? They must have known it. And then they pass to Joel Embiid. Oh, he's, what, 85% from the free throw line, and he's certainly very good in the clutch. It's things like that, that you have a big man that can hit the free throws, but also can make the buckets when you need him to. How valuable is that? Listen, how do you guard it? First of all, how do you guard it? So... If you're a coach, and here's a coach right here in the NBA, <laughs> when you're a coach in the league, you put that billboard, that blue uh, whiteboard, all right, Joel and B, we, this is how you stop them. You, uh, okay, but yeah, okay. So now we go mm -hmm. to, yeah, all right, we can just follow, yeah, but just let them shoot the, th yeah, we just, there's no hope, people. That's how coaches scout Joel and B. It's just no hope. You pray. Well, it was interesting because they were showing a lot of double teams. They didn't necessarily double team him a lot, certainly in the, in the first half. You saw a little bit more of the second half. But he, he ate, let's I mean, face it, 44 points. Jimmy's out here saying, like, he could get 50, and he could have gotten 50, but they started fouling him after a little bit. But it was one of those games that I don't know in years past we would have thought the Sixers could have closed this one out. Point. It got a little hairy at the end. You're looking at the other end, and you're thinking, oh, they got Kawhi Leonard. I mean, he's a very good closer. And then you're thinking, uh-oh. But they didn't have that doubt. Why do you think that is, Mark? They didn't have a doubt because, that, first of all, we have guys that can play on both ends of the floor. It don't make a difference who's in the game, ladies and gentlemen, respectfully. We got guys that can defend. We got guys that can score. We don't have just guys that play one end of the floor now in that rotation. So now when things get kind of hairy, we know we can always count on that person on the other end. We don't have to worry about making defensive or offensive substitutions because we got guys that can do both. Yeah, I think that's the think key. That. You don't have to take certain guys out. You can keep them in so you have a little bit more flow to the game. And the ball was really moving a lot. And that's one of the things we saw on the seven-game homestand. Another thing we saw was James Harden's assist go up. He, this is a seven-game homestand. Previous games, he had 11 on average. Now that's going to go up just a bit, Jim, because he's got 21 tonight, tying the franchise record with one Wilt Chamberlain and Mo Cheeks. See, Mo Cheeks, that was the championship of the year. Wilt Chamberlain actually had 20-20-20 uh, that game for something fun for you scoring at home. No surprise, James Harden is our Colonial Nissan game changer. And, and Jimmy, we've seen James Harden, his game evolve. He's the assist guy now. But the ball movement has been a lot different since he came back off the injured list. Yeah, that's a good observation. Uh, we spoke about that the other night, Aim. Uh, yeah, I conjecture on my part, but I think the Sixers played so well shorthanded. And I think you have to say that one of the reasons they did is the way they moved the ball. And James, is a, he's a bright guy, obviously, and he's sitting watching that. So I think he didn't want to, like, totally disrupt that. Yes, he's a tremendous one-on-one -on -one player, and he still gets his opportunity to do that. But come on, 21 assists. I mean, that speaks for itself in terms of him and his ability to share the basketball. I mean, at 31, so I, congrats to everybody else for somehow mustering to get 10, I guess, when you think about it, Jim and Mark. But when, you, when you're a player out there, Mark, and you have a guy that's going off like this, 21 assists, you always have to be ready? Always. Your hands are ready. And that's a lot of problems that a, young, a lot of young guys have, Amy, where they're not always ready. They get the ball, then they want to get in position for a shot, and that little split second, you throws your rhythm off. When you're playing with a great passer that commands a lot of attention because he's a scorer also, mm -hmm. you have to always have your hands ready because you don't know when that ball is going to hit you. Yeah, that's a good point. 20 points tonight. Uh, you saw Joel and Harden talking there at the end. I wonder Thanks. if that's when he said, listen, I need one rebound. Just let me have one rebound. And I'll get it. <laughs> Let's check in with Doc Rivers after this big win over the Clips. Leads get blown all the time in this league. And, you know, you just got to hang in there. You really did. I thought we hung in there. We didn't have much. I uh, didn't think we played with any pace in the first half. Zero physicality. Um, you know, we talked about playing in their airspace. And every shot, we had a gap. Uh, I thought in the second half, we got up, we pressured the ball up the floor. We made catches harder. Uh, they were later in the clock. We got misses, and it allowed us to play. You talked about James playmaking since he got here, but just what yeah. was particularly special about Just he's been great. I mean, listen, uh, and I said it the other day, this is a generational player score 
that has taken and decided to be a point guard still scores, but to be a point guard for this team. And that's hard to do. A lot of people, most people can't do that or will not do it is a better way of saying it. Uh, the, th- the fact that he is willingly doing it, running the team, uh, organizing us, uh, is huge for us, you know. Um, but I thought there was a lot of guys tonight. James was awesome. Jo- uh, Joel, Tobias, uh, Shake had a great stretch for us. Uh, Paul Reed, and that stretch uh, was huge for us. I mean, we, it was one of those wins where everybody who played did something to help us win. That was a good team win. Did you say something to the bench guys in, at halftime? Because they came out with a lot of energy and a lot of power. I, I, I said something to everyone at halftime. Uh, we just we didn't play we would we wasn't playing right that's not who we've been um i you know it's funny i liked our odds at halftime i i, I really did I, I thought we in the first half we did miss a lot of wide open shots um but everything was half court because they scored every i think they were shooting 60 percent at halftime um you're not going to win that game so uh i just thought everybody and you know we did grab the bench and say listen when you guys come in, now we, we made an adjustment. We put we kept James back in with the bench and Tobias uh, to start the third quarter. I, I thought that was a good move by us. Did you do something specifically on Paul George when he had five in the second half? No, that was all DeAnthony. You know, uh, we trapped uh, Kawhi uh, down the stretch and Paul down the stretch. Uh, but other than that, it was more DeAnthony Melton. It seemed like, it seemed like both teams kind of had to make that decision. We got that small and we're double on Joel. Yeah. Fire. That's exactly right. How do you, how do you think you guys handled that on the we did great, but it's a game of chicken, you know, because we both both teams have shooting, and you know that stretch when they went small, we had Joel near trap, and we got great shots. Um, the stretch when we trap, they got a couple good shots too. Um, you know, I was telling Paul, he jumps. You can't jump when you're trapping because now you can't get back down and rotate, and that's how they got to one layup. But other than that, I liked how we trapped. Uh, Kawhi's pretty clever. He kept trying to pull it back to drag us out. And we told our guys, once he pulls it out, get out, go. We'll take the one-on-one from there. I'm not mistaken, I don't think PJ played in the fourth quarter. No. Is there a reason behind that? Like, was he hurt? Or... Yeah, I think he is arm or something, nothing bad. Uh, we were going to go smaller with, with, with more spacing anyway at that point. Doc, this game kind of had a little bit of you know resemblance to the to the first game of the Thanksgiving against the Lakers in that last minute or so. Yeah. Did you feel like you saw the adjustments that you guys? Yeah, had? I thought we handled it well yeah. tonight. You know, um, got Joe the ball into the basket, uh, held on to the ball. Uh, I didn't like the the floaters, you know. So I love where we're at in our spots. Uh, I just didn't, you know, the Anthony's pass was like a knuckleball. Uh, to Joel, which have had some pace, probably gets a dunk. But other than that, I like what we did. Harden and beat pick and roll. It looked really good tonight, especially because Joel was there. I didn't hear The Harden and beat pick and roll. Yeah, it was great. Really good, yeah. especially because Joel was able to like, kind of pick his spot instead of going all the way to the rim. How do you feel like their chemistry in that? It's great. And tonight, you know, they had a, a, a big in Zub, and so they didn't want to switch that, right? And so, um, you know, we went in the game where we kind of had a pretty good idea who to attack in pick and rolls, you know. Uh, Zoo, even though he's a hell of a defender, but it allows our guards to go down. And then, you know, uh, Kennard, uh, more. I mean, we, we knew where we wanted to go with the ball tonight. And I thought that in the second half really showed his head. Is that the best you think you've seen them play together? I think they're playing well together. I mean, numbers wise, it clearly is the best. Uh, but I just think they have a great chemistry uh, right now, and it's just going to keep growing. Now, coming forward, do you think like playing in that high level, like competitive game? one of 82 can, can do something for a team. Oh, yeah. I think for us, you know, the Clippers have you know, been together a while and been through a lot of stuff, though they've had injuries. We can't have enough of these. I'd rather have 20-point games, honestly. But uh, these games are good for us. Um, Every one we get in, we learn something. And, you know, not only just as far as X and O's and schemes, but also rotations in certain different games. So uh, I love these games. Now, just talk about um, playing the Knicks on Christmas the honor, I guess it is, for, you know, NBA teams to get yeah. there. Yeah, it's, a, it's an honor. It really is. I, you know, I try not to take it for, I swear, I've had, I've had played in too many of them in some ways. And um, as a coach, you forget how special it is for players. Um, and, you know, I, early on, one of our guys 
who was going to play, obviously, told me how excited he was about a week ago. And honestly, I'd forgotten about it. Like, um, he was saying, man, I've never played in a Christmas Day game. I'm so excited. And, and when I was hearing him, I was like, I was thinking. And then when I thought about it, I said, yeah, we, sh- we should never take these for granted. Uh, it means you're, you're doing a good job. Your players are doing a good job. We got a good team. People want to see you. Um, you know, it is a sacrifice, obviously, but it's, uh, it's an honor. And so, um, you know, we, I can't take it for granted, neither can our players. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks guys. What a way to go into the Christmas holiday with a nice, cozy 7-0 winning streak at home. I mean, Jimmy, obviously they're getting ready to play Christmas Day, but this is the perfect way, and it was a perfect game, the way they had to fight back and really kind of assert themselves, certainly in the second half. Yeah, and I only have to go back game, what, a couple of weeks. You know, the Six were coming off a tough road loss. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, at Houston was the overtime game. Yes. Uh, but they had this homestand, you know, looming, and we felt that they had a chance with the idea of, you know, establishing that dominance in this building. And they did it in big-time fashion by sweeping the deck. Yeah, that was the first game back for James Harden. He wanted to go back, and obviously, you know, it did not work out well for them. They were 500 when this game, uh, homestand started, and now they're seven games over, and they're making some noise in the East, which is important because you've got the Knicks playing well, the Nets playing well, we know what the Celtics can do, and, of course, the Bucks. Amy, I didn't expect nothing different. That's right. You said it. I told you. I told you, listen, let this team get their feet under them. Let them get going, and then as soon as I said that, injuries happen from all day three, big, big three. But with that being said, it's enough time in the season to really get these guys repped up. But listen, I don't see it all as, guys, as James, to, uh, Joel, and Maxi being injured as a negative, negative event. Let me tell you why. Because it's given opportunity to shake Milton, mm-hmm. the Anthony Milton to get going, Montrez Havel, Reed, George Niang's been on fire. It's getting opportunities to Tobias to get his rhythm back being on the ball. So sometimes bad things happen to good people, but it also equals to success. And I think that can also be with tips to tell for the Sixers. I mean, this was a beginning of the season where we thought the bench was going to be so good. They were slowing out of the gates, but now they found that rhythm. And I think opportunities like you're speaking of coming in and with these spot starts like DeAnthony Melton and Shake Milton, those are really going to pay dividends down the stretch. All right. Let's, uh, oh, there it is, as if on cue, play the song for the seventh straight time at home. Clap your hands, everybody. Sixers get the win. We're going to talk a little bit about Joel Embiid's 44-point night, and it will take you, as well take you to some of the player interviews as soon as they step to the podium. Stick with us here. Sixers Post Game Live brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. Here they come, Philadelphia. Sixers Post Game Live is presented by Cure Auto Insurance. See how much you can save at Cure.